we didn't have a lot of comments about about the visions, um, and they're pretty minor, so I don't think that's the most important part of the discussion. So I'll let them look at those. The strategies that were highlighted. Um, a lot of stuff about the waterfront, and I'll try to synopsize some of those. The waterfront really needs to include the river and all types of the waterfront, waterfront opportunities. We talk about connecting the river to the waterfront. It seems like we're talking about the Dock Street part of the waterfront, but really the Saranac River and all the work that's already done on the Saranac Trail is a big part of waterfront development in Plattsburgh, and we need to connect those things. Um, a lot of emphasis on needing to create a vibrant downtown where there's a lot going on a lot going on at different times, people living downtown, but people coming downtown because that's what's going to, you know, it's like the circle. You start having a lot of stuff going on, it attracts people, people want to come back. Um, opportunities for both residential and retail, 24-hour, 18-hour, 24-hour downtown, so it's a buzz, there's a place that people want to be, both early in the morning, late at night, and everything in between. Uh, downtown housing, really important to try to create um, Improved buildings, and we talked a lot about the idea of both this idea of public-private investment, that, that that might be one of the priorities for the money in this project is to encourage private investment, people who are working on their properties downtown by investing some um, public money. And create a downtown district, that idea of sort of an identity. Quantity of mixed use environments, that there's got to be a lot of different things going on downtown. I think that was one of my points, which is you can't invest in all the same thing because if, if a sector dies, then you lose the whole thing. So you have to have a lot of mix and variety. Uh, leverage private investment through this project. Um, incentivize small businesses downtown, unique businesses, things that have a, a, an individual flavor. Help them, but don't do it for them. Don't pay for all of it. Uh, this is, um, there is a community store in Saranac Lake which kind of fits a niche that we've talked about, which is um, people get drained to Route 3 because that's where the big box stores are where you buy your essentials. And if we want to have people live downtown and we want to pull college students downtown, we have, to, we have to provide some of those same resources downtown. And there is a community store in Saranac Lake that's, that's a success that came up out of the community and that was an answer to keeping big box stores out of town. So it seems like that's a, that's a model that might be worth looking at. It's local, it's something we could, people we can talk to. We talked a lot about the idea of sh running a shuttle downtown, um, specifically from SUNY, but, but also throughout downtown so that, so that it sort of gets at that walkability issue. People can move around and you don't have so much of a fuss about where you park your car because it's easy to get to everything. We also talked about the idea of actually creating a walking only zone um, in part of downtown so that we could get rid of the narrow streets, create a place where people could come, not the whole downtown, but walkability invites you to linger, invites you to look at other things that are going on. It creates a center and a buzz where people can go, and we've got the suggestion about where that is in the notes. Um, convenient parking, open air trolley, that's part of that system. Somebody suggested the idea of Duck tours, kind of like they do in Boston, is the one I'm most familiar with, but we have a lot of uh, water resources, so having some kind of amphibious vehicle that could do a, an on-ground tour and then jump right out in the lake is something that we, we could support, at least with our, with the, with our natural resources. Um, again, extending the Saranac River Trail, finish that portion that encompasses the, the, the um, the abatement or the abatement area that we've got that's kind of blocked us from finishing to connect the Saranac Trail, so that people can can come in from the college, they can come in from other parts of Plattsburgh and come right down into the city on their bikes or on their skateboards or walking their dogs. Invest in green spaces. Really take a look at the cityscape, the appeal of downtown facades, green things on the street. But also, uh, we have a lot of park space, but it's kind of highly utilized and there's not a lot of green space in our park spaces. And if you want people to live down there and have a place to linger and have kids, you got to have spaces for people to play. There was even a suggestion about creating like a fountain park that little children and others who are hot can play in in the summer and become a des destination. 
Uh, big emphasis on finding a way to attract young families to downtown if you want to have it be vibrant and sort of have it move into the future. So that's what we talk about. I think I'm going to make just start off with a real quick comment that was made earlier. Um, you know, we we're looking at the vision, the vision uh, statement in it. Uh, I reminded our group that that vision statement was directly from the uh, 2015 uh, waterfront planning process here in the town of Plattsburgh. It was really vetted quite thoroughly, and it's a pretty good uh, vision statement. So I think that, and I think that the follow up with that then is also that the parts of this process where we find other reports and plans that have been done in the past that will allow us to go ahead and keep moving more quickly through this process because it is this process is on a real <coughs> short time frame so under the first goal in creating a vibrant downtown enhancing the experience of multiple audiences uh, we looked at making sure that tourism is a component of this project because again with that same concept of plans that have been done the uh, the, the county uh, destination master plan has specific uh, approaches and strategies in that plan. And the way that it relates to the downtown thing would be the bicycle, the cycling component and the uh, uh, river, uh, lake, um, you know, sports activities kinds of things. Um, we, we looked at uh, uh, where we discussed looking at the vehicular movement through downtown. I don't think it's been done. In, uh, that I'm aware of. I don't know, Rodney, maybe you might, but uh, you know, nobody's really done a, a careful anal analysis. And I, I think anybody who's lived up here for a long period of time has experienced the driving through Plattsburgh and all of a sudden you're going, oh my God, I'm driving down the wrong way on a one-way street. <laughs> but uh, it's still something to evaluate how the traffic moves through downtown and, and what that uh, uh, cycling and pedestrian relationship is with the vehicles that move through it. Um, and we looked at, uh, we talked about, uh, you know, again in that same vein of uh, vehicular movement, you know, narrowing Margaret Street to one lane or uh, uh, making Oak Street two-way traffic, you know, just things that would say, let's look at how we're making uh, movement in the transportation system through downtown. Um, uh, we talked, uh, we picked up on the idea of a tourism trolley, like similar to the Lake Placid thing. Um, we, we recognize that that connectivity between the college and downtown is all pedestrian. So, uh, the student association bus goes to the other part of uptown. It doesn't go ahead and make a connection downtown here. And then also, you know, recognizing where are those nodal points that we want to be able to make that short hop of transportationally. Rodney, I, you know, might be a good conversation for James to get involved in, in terms of, you know, where are these short shuttle uh, uh, routes that could be achieved with moving people in numbers. Um, we had a discussion about uh, a hotel at the waterfront and uh, versus uh, uh, the Durkee Street area. Um, I, I threw out a piece of information that many people in the community may not be aware of that if you go in the exit 30, uh, the mall exit off of the Northway, there are over 1,200 hotel rooms in that area up there. Okay, so we don't have any down here. Um, it's, but, you know, so there is investment being made, you know, and that's the, the problem is if investors are putting money into the hospitality industry, then how do you attract them and where should you attract them? Should it be Durkee Street versus down on the waterfront? Um, then moving to goal two, and I'm just, it, it helps me to, uh, to make sure that I'm, understanding what these goals are. Goal two being to provide diverse housing and shopping options. Uh, we're looking at, uh, again, in that hospitality thing about hotel rooms, is it large scale, is it small scale? Is it B&B &B level, um, boutique, you know, use that, putting an emphasis on uh, preserving our historic structures that we have downtown. Um, we talked about multifamily housing uh, in connection with the waterfront. Um, Making Margaret Street, there was another conversation about making Margaret Street uh, a pedestrian street. You know, this idea of pedestrian um, exclusiveness has been in many communities evaluated, but a discussion about that. Um, but making sure clearly that the pedestrian component is, you know, a part of the downtown experience, along with the connectivity 
between the college and downtown or other places. Um, the Oval is something that I throw out there myself in terms of connectivity, pedestrian. Um, uh, uh, something, some, something for shoppers. Look at, oh, awning. Was it awning? That's my Uh, and using uh, Kingston, uh, Kingston, New York as, a, as an example, as a model. Um, moving on then to the third goal, which is to attract and retain businesses and jobs to support economic development. Uh, we touched on an incubator kind of concept. There are different models. We talked about the Clarkson uh, incubator, um, but with a concept of making it a small scale and fitting into the downtown uh, uh, aspect. Um, uh, uh, making uh, uh, Wi-Fi uh, accessible to the public and making sure that uh, the Wi-Fi that's available or the internet that's available for the rest of the downtown district is a, um, a, an effective functioning kind of uh, system. And what did we say? We, we didn't like the college at all, right? <laughs> we said that the college should go. College already does this. Uh, um, incubator. Incubator. College yes. Yes. The so you know, in integrating perhaps then maybe the uh, the college incubator experience. That's us. Oh wait. Oh my God. Uh, we're missing some retail uh, shoe store. What about a social community sustainability? Something that this community hasn't really had a lot of dialogue and discussion about is community sustainability, economic sustainability, and you know, how you bring a check in this process to make sure that sustainability is a component of the decision making. Um, and then let's see, uh, different types of capacity get considered, uh, making sure su sustainability is part of this, making sure we're providing a place for community interactions you know, so there's, that's an open-ended discussion, but, you know, the best model and example we've got currently is the farmer's market aspect. Um, and making sure that downtown uh, uh, revolution, the downtown revolution, uh, oh, oh, no, making sure that downtown retail accepts um, Cardinal Cash, and again, you know, emphasis on pedestrian connectivity. I think that was it. We have two more to go through. Let's focus on those, any new topics that you haven't already heard from the other groups. We have time to get through all of these. Uh, all, we need to <laughs> all right. So I think um, one real idea that really stuck with me, one of the first, first time I, re I really thought about it, was imagine that you were coming to Flatwick for the first time and you are not arriving by vehicle. You are arri arriving by either bus or train. And then you get here, and you get out of the train station. Where do you get a sandwich? Nowhere, right? So uh, one of the things that we talked about was maybe creating some sort of centralized transportation hub downtown um, where students, when they come on a bus or come on a train, they get out and there's there are economic opportunities around them. There's something to buy, there's somewhere to sit, um, there's somebody to talk to uh, who's not like creepy and like <laughs> in the shadows, right? Um, another, <laughs> something else, we, we, we love the idea of the incubator space and the community space, um, sort of taking this uh, idea of places where young people are flocking to now, like Portland, Oregon, or um, Brooklyn, Bushwick, uh, and Windsor, Brooklyn, or like West Nashville, um, where there are a lot of community incubator spaces for small businesses. Um, like, let's say I want to make some delicious popsicles, but I don't have a whole bunch of money to buy a storefront and buy all the equipment for popsicle making. I could then go to a sort of community place that has this, uh, that has this, this like the, what do you call it, machines and all that junk. Um, and get my get my start with my possible business there, right? Um, and then maybe have like a market through which to sell my my tasty organic popsicles. Um, let's see. Oh, so we thought that this could be a great opportunity here to create um, a cohesive identity for Plattsburgh, the city. Um, I was born here, lived here for a long time, and moved away. 
for about 10 years and then moved back. And something that I've always felt or noticed is that we're really fragmented. There's like the downtown area, there's like the Bailey Avenue area, there's like the uptown area, there's like the south side area, you know. So I feel like the, the center, the thing that we're all sort of around is this cool downtown area and I would like, uh, I would like our entire community to feel represented in that. Uh, that's one of the things that we talked about, possibly through use of like murals or art or things like that. Um, let's see, what else we talked about here? Train station. Um, some public open space, maybe like a skating rink slash duck pond, uh, which sort of ties in with an idea that we talked about. Places for young families to come, bring their kids, not be approached by shady figures, etc. Um, so some, some, and these could be some ways to sort of like keep students, retain students, have a connection between uh, college and downtown. Just blast right through here. Yeah, look at that. So, oh yeah, so some of the things that our college offers, um, we would like to sort of target our business opportunities toward um, the skills that we are, I guess, allowing students to grow into at our college. Um, and of course, improved access to waterfront, that's something that we definitely talked about. Um, we have a beautiful river and a beautiful lake, we want to see more of it. Ooh, maybe a cool focal point for a downtown or something to tie together the renovation. Um, I made a proposal that we make that we put all of our money into uh, one solid goal. Please use sword that represents Champy, but that got shut down real <laughs> quick. Uh, uh, let's see. Oh, maintenance. Okay, so that was one of the things. Like, we want, we want uh, you know, we talked about this idea in, sociolo in sociology really quick. I forget to name it on doesn't matter. But if something already looks beautiful, then you as a person who is there will be more likely to keep it beautiful, right? So we like having art uh, around, even, even little art things where something maybe like, you know, where crap pavement was, we replaced that with nice art. Uh, maintenance was something we talked about a lot. Benches, places to sit. Um, all over the place. I skip the Can I interject though? I think it's a communication Please. with DPW for DPW to maintain all these open spaces that we're talking about um, in a way of weeding and mowing yeah. and just some of the public places yeah. right now aren't. Yeah. DPW is great. Yeah. <laughs> they may, in just a different way or system, volunteers, something. I definitely skip the page. An awesome page. So you're lucky. You got it. Um, so, uh, uh, so in particular projects, we talked about the. You guys know Hub on the Hill. Anyway? Yes. So we would like to have a Hub on the Hill downtown for people who come in, make awesome local products. Um, so outside seating, who's been to a restaurant downtown and sat next to a concrete barrier? <laughs> I sure have. Uh, so one of the things that we talked about is perhaps making more beautified parklets. Um, it's a thing that's happening all across the nation, and it's super popular. And uh, essentially, we would just need to allow so that we can have seating outside of restaurants or businesses or whatever um, without giant concrete barriers surrounding um, that cool wood stuff. It would essentially extend the sidewalk, if I'm understanding this correctly. Um, so yeah, because I know I like me a taco without having to rest my arm on. Some weird concrete, yeah. <laughs> uh, focal point, yep. Let's see, are we missing anything here? Oh, website, right? So uh, you just get to town. You want to know some stuff to do if you're under 35 and not me, you're going to whip out your smartphone and be like, things to do in Plattsburgh. Uh, so we think it'd be great to have an improved website for tourism. Um, Something that when people do a Google search for stuff to do in the Adirondacks, platform comes up, they can go to a <coughs> nice flowing site, um, perhaps even do some web advertising uh, for people looking to take a vacation. Let's see. This is a, this is a really um, interesting idea, which I had never considered, but 
for people who are just moving here or visiting here to improve our information distribution, uh, the phrase that really caught on was lower <coughs> barriers to entry. Uh, I've lived here for many, many a year, and so I know how to get to the river and I know how to find you know, a tasty place to go eat, but if I'm just coming here, uh, we can have uh, a more, I guess, accessible uh, way to pass that information along. Um, train station, information hub, that's something that we talked about, or uh, transportation hub, that's something that we talked about. <coughs> really, really great. I think that will go. Right?
Yeah, I'd like to thank on behalf of the uh, city town on all of you for coming out. This is true. I'd also like to know, did Alan Booth leave us? He's still around? No, he's, he stepped out. He stepped out? Yep. Rodney, do you know if there's still copies of that 20 year old reporter? Well, actually? he was waving one. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the city hall. It's in the package. It's, 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 we've got it. Okay, good. Yeah, and the yeah. consultants have, have it as well? Yeah, yeah, good. Make sure that they do. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you all for coming out. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you to the end of the library and have a good night, everybody.